I like to call to order the Village of Hazelcrest regular board meeting at 714, Pledge Allegiance, Trustee Moore. Call, please. After roll. Trustee Grant. Here. Trustee Moore. Here. Trustee Ramsey. Present. Trustee Rios. Here. Trustee Rogers. Here. Trustee Slayton. Here. President Osbury. Here. We have a quorum. Prayer, please. Shall we all stand, please? Father God, we thank you for allowing us to see another, another day, Lord. We thank you for reconvening after a much-needed vacation during the month of August. And Lord, we thank you for the repurposing of this beautiful edifice, and we ask that you look on us and bless us during this meeting and those that are to follow. Lord, help us be of one mind and one purpose for the betterment of Hazelcrest so that we can continue to be Hazelcrest proud. These blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Do we have any consideration for possible remote action? Yes. Any correspondence? No correspondence. Yeah, that's a correspondence. No correspondence? Yeah, uh, I'm going to let you read a, a letter that was sent out, email that was sent uh, to uh, Chief. I don't want to read it itself. So, Chief, can you pull that up and actually bring it over for the clerk to read? Can you find it, Chief? Uh, Send it to me, bro. There you go. Can you read? Oh. There you go. All right. Is it big enough for me to read? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Thanks, Marlon. Okay. A letter addressed to uh, Chief Mitchell Davis. Hello, Chief Davis. My name is Carl Martin, and I live in Western Australia. Hmm. I, monitor, I monitor law and order issues in your great state of Illinois. And I saw your press conference about the off-duty police officer who shot two armed robbers when he went to buy a computer. I just wanted to say, I wish we had police commissioners like you in Australia. The magic comments you made were, quote, the police officer in this case is definitely the victim here, unquote. That is so important for law and order, you stating that. In Australia, the police don't say things like that. They just say an investigation is ongoing and they achieve nothing. Law and order is breaking down here. For police chief to make comments that is extremely significant, it makes people believe you are on the side of the law, abiding, on the side of law-abiding citizens and not the offenders. God bless, and I will conti continue to visit your web pages and keep track of what you are up to over there in Hazelcrest. There are now two great police chiefs, one, uh, that I follow in the U.S. You and the great James Craig over in Detroit. Regards, Carl Martin. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Uh, yeah, international, Chief, international. Uh, Mayor's report. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, 
Frank Zuccarelli from the Thornton Township. He had a great uh, back to school kickoff here, right here in Thornton Township over in the park. Uh, he gave away huge boxes of food and chips, and he had a great picnic, a lot of music. So I want to thank uh, committee man uh, Frank Zuccarelli for, for the work he's doing in Thornton Township, and we should give him a round of applause. <laughs> Number two, uh, I want to thank the development of this wonderful facility. What do you guys think? Yeah. For, for many, many years, we've uh, moved forward and tried to provide services on all parts of the village of Hazelcrest. Uh, Hazelcrest proper being the original part of Hazelcrest. Uh, we've purchased land here. We've purchased buildings. Uh, we've moving forward some other things that we're trying to make happen here. And uh, to have a place, this is not the park district, this actually belongs to the village. And so we'll have a tour after all this is over. But to have a place where uh, our youth can meet, families can meet, uh, cheerleaders can cheer, and tumblers can tumble, I think is a great thing to have. And it's in the part of the community where kids can, and families can actually walk here. It's not a matter of trying to drive on the other side. Not that we don't enjoy the park district, but we need something that is easy sitting in the middle of our community that allows our citizens and our residents uh, to, uh, to really get to know each other and to work and play together. So I want to give a round of applause to the village manager, the village board for making this happening, and uh, Irma Holloway who led the move to, to actually make this great place possible. So give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> but also, you know, I'm, 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 I like to talk about some things because sometimes we get caught up in some issues in our community and things get on a ballot that we don't know about and uh, people don't really get the truth. They get pieces of the truth. So I'm going to read a statement here because I think it's important that people know when issues are out there that they might have to vote, vote on in the future. Uh, once again, Max Solomon, who the same Max Solomon who ran for the Hazelcrest Village President, State Senator, State Representative, School Board 144, South Suburban College, and was overwhelmingly defeated. The same Max Solomon who cost the village of Hazelcrest taxpayers over $60,000, defeating his furious and mean-spirited attempt to knock qualified candidates off the ballot in 2017. This, Mac, this Solomon is now circulating a referendum petition a referendum passes will enforce the village to change my current system for all trustees running at large, village-wide, to a system where trustees will be elected by districts. Make no mistakes, districts are the same as wards. In other words, Mr. Mr. Solomon wants to turn our village into a Chicago-style ward system with artificial boundaries which will be drawn artificially to separate, to separate several wards into our community. This is a terrible idea. Our trustees response, responsive, are responsible and accountable to all citizens, regardless of what part of the town you live in. Right now, you have six responsible to all of the village. Why would you trade that to have one trustee representing one part of town? That makes no sense. We're a strong community in large part because of our great homeowner associations. If world maps are drawn, our subdivisions will be divided and fractured into different wards. Why would you risk the strengthening, a strength of your homeowner association to be broken up into many wars? It makes no sense at all. As a village board, we always made decisions based on what's best for our entire village, regardless of what part of the village is involved in the decision. We would want to replace that unity of Chicago style into Chicago style politics where wars are fighting against each other rather than working together. It, it just doesn't make any sense to do that. In my opinion, the reason Mr. Solomon is pushing for his Chicago war plan is obvious. He has shown in a village-wide candidate he's, a, he's terrible. He is hoping that if the referendum passes, he can break the village up to smaller districts where it's easier to get elected when you only got 100 people voting for you mm -hmm. and not 3,000 people voting for you. This is not a good public policy. It's a selfish plan that doesn't make sense. The next election is March 2018. But I want you to know that where I stand with Mr. Solomon's Chicago-style referendum, I oppose it 100%. If he asks you to sign a petition, that's your prerogative. But I want you to understand a couple of things. 
when you start dividing the communities into sections, when you only have a town of 15,000 people, you have the same thing we see with our neighbors and our neighboring communities. You have people fighting over small things when we should be working together over large things. That is no way to run a community. It always sounds good when people come to you and say, hey, why don't you have one person just representing your, your part of town? What is your part of town? It doesn't make sense in the suburbs. We're too small. It would destroy neighborhoods. It would destroy homeowner associations. It would kill us and cost us too much money. Because once you break up in wards, you have to double the number of trustees you have. You won't have six. You will actually have 12, like they used to have at Country Club Hills. And then you have to pay to get your community divided up. So now you got to pay someone to come up and develop a map to divide your community into different parts. And then you have to have another election. And we have to pay for that election to see what trustee represents a certain part of town. So I want you to be aware when people knock on your door and say one thing, when reality is all about them, it's not about you. Thank you. And so I have another uh, proclamation here, it's called the Swaddle Proclamation, Southwest Area Diaper uh, dis Depository. Depository for Little Ends. Interesting. <laughs> Dear Mr. President, as the chair of the board of directors of Swaddle, Southwest Area Diaper Depository for Little Ends, located in Palos Hills, Illinois, Heights, Illinois, I am writing to request you to proclaim September 25th, October the 1st, 2017 as Diaper Needed Awareness Week in Hazelcrest and take part in the growing national movement now in its sixth year. Our proclamation will be used in conjunction with other states and local governments around the United States to inform our community that there are families who cannot afford diapers for their children and diaper banks across the country that are helping families obtain the diapers they need. Last year, diaper banks in the National Diaper Bank Network secured similar proclamations from the governors or state legislators in 34 states as well from mayors and county officials in 119 cities and counties throughout the country. Swaddle is a member of the National Diaper Bank Network, which has been actively raising awareness and addressing diaper needs across the country. The Diaper Network Bank supports a network of over 300 active diaper banks and many more starting diaper programs located in nearly every state in the United States. Along with the National Bank Network, individual diaper banks across the country will hold events and will work their local and state governments to raise awareness of this need and the good work that diaper banks do to help parents obtain this basic necessity for their children. So uh, in our next meeting, September 25th, we will have the proclamation proclaiming National Swaddle Month. Well, I forget they have disposable diapers, you know. So with that, uh, we're going to have the swearing in of the police officer, Chief. Sure, sure.
for the state of Illinois. Here it is, Java. I also want to have Java Rogers. We are going to be collecting uh, items for the Harvey storm and also for Florida. And Java, give a little background on that, please. Um, the village of Hazelcrest will on Saturday, I'm sorry, Friday, September 15th, at Markham Skating Rink, you can drop off items for the people who have suffered from hurricane in Texas and the hurricane in Florida so that we can ship items down to both states. There are going to be trucks set up in our, uh, not in our village, at the Walmart parking lot on Friday through Sunday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can bring all items such as uh, cases of water, detergent, clothes, but any items that you have that you want to donate will be greatly appreciated and we are participating in this as a village. Uh, any clarification, uh, please? Well, it's the, uh, the uh, participants from the South Suburban Regional Black Marks, Black, Mayor's Black Caucus, along with uh, the Southland Health Association, Ministerial Association, are be collecting items in Markham and in Country Club Hills. In Country Club Hills on Saturday, from 8 o'clock to 7 p.m., you could bring items there that they're going to take that down to Houston and to Florida. Some of the main items that they're looking for, though, are adult diapers, youth diapers, underwear for kids and adults, socks, and uh, blankets. They're also looking for backpacks. These are things we usually don't think about when you have a disaster like this. But some of the people who live in the inner city, who may have lived in apartments, they move from place to place. They have no way to carry things. And so that's why they're asking for things like backpacks, so they can actually put things in the backpack. So we're looking like for first aid kits, again, underwear for adults and, and children. We're looking for diapers, 
personal hygiene items for men and women. Uh, those are some of the main things they're asking for. Clothing is okay and water is okay, but what they're finding that they have a shortage of is those personal items that people really don't think about. And small blankets are very important. And again, backpacks are huge so that they could be able to move from place to place uh, during that time. Yes, Chief. Yes. So, so bleach and bleach and cleaning goods and things that they really need that they're overwhelmed with water. One of the chiefs is in Houston. Yeah. So she's telling us she's at ground zero. She's telling them they've been overwhelmed with water, but they really need things that the mayor is saying, plus they need cleaning goods. And this, this item is going to the Red Cross, but a lot of the three of the trucks are really going to inner city churches. Because uh, some of the people in the inner city, you really need to get into the city because sometimes, you know, Red Cross can't get uh, deep into the, the inner city that people who really need these items. And so this truck, uh, we have some churches down there that have connections with some of the pastors here. And so they'll be accompanying them on Tuesday. So this will really get to the people who actually have uh, been devastated uh, by the storms. So thank you very much. <laughs> Drop-off location is going to be... Uh, the Markham Library, the Markham Skating Rink, and Country Club Hills Walmart parking lot. There'll be a semi-truck sitting there. And that truck will be there on Saturday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. All right? And we have some flyers, and they'll be on the, uh, our website, and we'll make sure everyone is be, it'll be on the uh, cable channel also so you know exactly the times and the dates for those items to be turned in. Thank you so very much. At this time, uh, village manager. Thank you. Um, yes, we are back after a vacation in August, but I am happy to say that the audit has been completed. Um, it's the first in a long time that we have actually completed the audit and will be able to submit the audit to the state and all governmental entities without filing an extension. The auditors will be here for the first meeting in October to present so that we can get everything mailed out. Uh, that was exciting for us in the finance world, in accounting, and for the department heads and everyone uh, for the month of August. Uh, there are several financial reports that are not on the website and some that uh, you as trustees and the mayor have not received. You will be receiving all of those by the end of the month. Um, I'm just in the last review stage of those, and then they will be passed on so they can be uploaded to the website. Um, as soon as the audit has been approved by the board, the audit also will be uploaded to the website. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Uh, legal? No report. Police?
President, uh, trustees, um, just a few updates. Um, they have started work on the Wood Street from 167th to 171st. Uh, they're pulling the concrete out and curb work. So when they're done with that, then they will start the uh, street grinding and uh, resurfacing. Also, that's the same for 170th Street. They're doing from Dixie Highway to Western Avenue. They did start saw cutting the concrete work on that, so there will be um, starting that eventually here shortly. Um, also, I submitted a list uh, to Donna of streets that she would wanted in town that needed uh, attention. So a list has been turned into her and we'll probably have discussion on that eventually. Also, um, our brush burning is, uh, we started up this week, which we have tremendous amount of brush from last month's pickup. Uh, just a reminder that uh, brush pickup is in October, and we would appreciate that uh, residents um, do not put it out on the parkway till the Monday of their pickup. Also, uh, we're finishing up our, some asphalt patches from our water break uh, incident we had, and then we'll be doing the rest of the uh, ground restorations. That's all I They are getting done. Oh, that Birchwood and Elm are going to be resurfaced also. Okay, thank you. Human Resources. Oh. Sorry, Inspectional Services. Resources. Thank you, Mr. President, trustees, Madam Manager. Just a couple of quick updates. God bless you. Uh, back in uh, June, just a, a couple months ago, uh, Irma came out, the Intergovernmental Risk Management Agency, to perform a hazard survey report. It was three parts. Uh, part one identified the results of a, a physical observation. Part two identified uh, proactive risk management practices, and then part three outlined specific hazards and then uh, ways to mitigate those hazards. Uh, once they came and did the walkthrough, which was all day, uh, they did, then provided us about a month later with a listing of things that we had to correct. 
uh, in terms of hazards or potential hazards. And I am so happy to say uh, that after working with directly with John Albano and also Sandra Blunt, uh, we actually got a confirmation of receipt and we actually passed with our corrective actions. Yay. <laughs> There was a lot that went into that, and I'm, I'm actually excited. Uh, my second uh, update is actually regarding the uh, electronic payroll process. Um, we started punching in and out as a, uh, a unit, all employees, for the Village of Hazelcrest back on August 13th. And today, we officially made an electronic transfer uh, for our payroll, as opposed to doing it manually. Now, mind you, this is the official first step, so uh, what I will do tomorrow along with the Paylocity rep is to go through what we transferred and then compare that to the spreadsheets that the administrative assistants have so kindly continued to provide to me and then we'll decide what rules were missed, what need to, needs to be edited, how we need to improve it, but uh, we're on our way and I just want to say a big thank you to the admin assistants who um, they got on my nerve. I, and I <laughs> I got on their nerves, but we worked through it. And thank you, uh, Madam Manager, for allowing us to do it. That's all I have. Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At the Fire Department, we finally hired three new firemen. You'll be introduced to them at the next board meeting. Uh, those three bring us up to a total of 18. In the 2017 budget, was approved to add three additional firemen to the fire department. Because of the demands of the Mavis 24, which is a mutual aid box alarm system, we, we tried to keep Hazelcrest protected by adding additional people to our town so that we'll be able to service other towns and still be able to keep firemen here in our own town. So we hired three. You'll be meeting them in a couple weeks. Also, I'd like to mention that the October is Fire Prevention Month, and there will be uh, an open house at the fire department on October the 7th, from 9 until noon. And uh, we're going to have refreshments there and several different fire operations going on for the viewing of the public. And that is my report. Thank you. Thank you. Community and business development. Okay. Economic development. Irma, do you have anything you would like to say? Okay. No, no other report. Okay. One thing I want to, uh, and we could talk a little bit about the uh, Village Hall. Uh, those of you who have, are not aware, uh, to make citizens aware, uh, we have moving forward to build a new Village Hall. Uh, we're not going to build from the ground up. Uh, we have uh, worked to deal with the Southland uh, Bank, South, South Suburban Land Bank, uh, to purchase the building on 183rd Street, uh, which is located right across the street from Bank Financial. Uh, that building uh, sits next, right next door to the Senatorial Center. It's a 30,000 square foot building. Uh, we're, that way will save the village a lot of money. So the new village hall is beginning to shape up. And so we want the citizens to be aware of that. And as we move forward, as we move forward with the plans and the design, we'll make sure all the citizens are aware of it and that uh, we will actually move forward on that. And we're also looking to new, build a new police station. Uh, right now, we're looking to build a new police station here in Hazelcrest proper area. So we will also update you on that process as we move it forward. 
Thank you very much. At this time, we're going to move to pending business. It's a very short meeting, so we're going to give you a nice little tour of your new facility. Yep. Oh, they didn't put it on there. I'm sorry. At this time, we'll, uh, can I get a motion for public participation for items on the agenda? I move that we open the meeting for public participation for items on the agenda only. Moved by Trustee Ramsey, second by Trustee Slayton to open for public participation for items on the uh, agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're open for anyone who want to speak to any items that's here on the agenda. Come for it now. Can I get a motion to close public participation? I second. Moved by Trustee Slayton, second by Trustee Rogers to close public participation. All those in favor? All right, now we move to pending business. Trustee Ramsey. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we'll have those for the next next board meeting. Okay. We put, do we postpone? Yeah. 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 We'll, uh, can I get a motion to postpone the uh, reading of the minutes to the next board, village board meeting? Next we'll move by Trustee Ramsey, second by Trustee Reyes, to postpone the reading of the regular village uh, meeting from July 25th, 2017, to the next regular village board meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Roll call, please. Yes. Trustee Grant? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Ramsey? Yes. Trustee Reyes? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee Slayton? Yes. Motion carried. Trustee Reyes? I move to approve accounts payable number 18-07, dated August 8, 2017, in the amount of $20,096,532.87. Accounts payable number 18-08, dated August 22, 2017, $399,961.76 and accounts payable number 18-09 dated September 12, 2017 in the amount of $305,954.50. Been moved by Trustee Reyes, second by Trustee Slayton to approve accounts payable number 18-07 dated August 8, 2017 in the amount of $296,533.87, accounts payable number 18-08, dated August 22, 2017, in the amount of $399,961.76, and accounts payable number 18-09, dated September 12, 2017, in the amount of $305,954.50. In discussion on this item, roll call please. Trustee Grant? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Ramsey? Yes. Trustee Reyes? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee Slayton? Yes. Motion carries. Trustee Rogers? I move to adopt an ordinance establishing and implementing a program to charge mitigation rates for the deployment of emergency and non-emergency services by the fire department for services provided and rendered for the Hazelcrest Fire Department. Been moved by Trustee Rogers, second by Trustee Ramsey, excuse me, to adopt the ordinance establishing and implementing a program to charge mitigation rates for the deployment uh, of emergency and non emergency services by the fire department for services provided and rendered for the Hazelcrest Fire Department. Any discussions on this item? Roll call, please. Trustee Grant? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Ramsey? Yes. Trustee Reyes? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee Slayton? Yes. Motion carries. Can I get a motion to open for public participation? I move that open for public participation. Second. Been moved by Trustee Slayton, second by Trustee Reyes, to open the floor for public participation. Anybody that wish to come forward to talk about any issue, uh, this is the time to do it. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Chris Cole. I am a Hazelcrest resident. And Park District Commission, I just wanted to let everybody know that we are having an ice cream social this Thursday at the Park District, 6.30 p.m. 
Um, it's for really for all ages. It's kind of like a meet and greet for the commissioners, but also we're going to have uh, ice cream, of course. We're going to have fun. We're going to have games. We're going to have music. So please come out. We're going to have face painting going on. Um, once again, it's this Thursday at 630, uh, ending at 830 right at the Park District uh, over the bridge. All right, so I just wanted to give everybody a reminder. Thank you so much. 6.30. Six 6.30 30 Thursday at the Hazelcrest Park District. Ice cream show, social. Open from everyone. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello everyone. My name is Gregory Washington. I reside at 3425 Maple Lane. Um, and I'm come representing Hazelcrest Open Lands Commission. We are having our annual Johnny C. Giant Apple Seeds birthday party. It will be held September the 23rd from 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, we will have educational material related to Johnny Apple Seed mm -hmm. and environmentalism. And we will have apple-based products like apple cider. I look forward to seeing everybody there, and also it's free. We encourage everybody from not just Hazelcrest, but also from the Southland or from Chicago proper or anywhere else throughout the county to come and show up. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. My name is Natasha Vincent. I'm a Hillcrest alumni. I grew up in Hazelcrest. Right. I am with an organization and we're helping 18 to 24 year olds who are out of school with getting a construction um, certification or weatherization. It's free for them. They get a $200 stipend per week for 12 weeks. It's OSHA certified. And if you're familiar with WIOA, they're also able to get WIOA services. I do have flyers. We're only able to serve 25 people across the Thornton Township area in this area, only 25. I've been having a tough time recruiting. I don't know why with free services, but if anyone is interested in the community, you can come see me and I have flyers. Thank now, this is for Thornton Township? Thornton Township, yeah. Okay. Riverdale, Robbins, Calumet, East Hazelcrest, Hazelcrest, those particular areas. Fantastic. Uh, our director will get with you. They also offer the same program for people who live in Bremen and Rich. You have to go to Prairie State College. So it's a great program. It's for ages it's 16 to 24, correct? 16 to 24, you do get a $200 stipend. We need people to get into weatherization and construction. Okay? Anybody, anyone else? Can I get a motion to close public participation? Been moved by Trustee Ramsey, second by Trustee Rogers, that we close public participation. All those in favor? Aye. I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. I want you to actually take a short tour of the facility and have some of the refreshments they have. And if there's any left, that's what trustees mean. back. And again, I want to thank you all for coming out and have a great evening. Can I get a motion to adjourn? The move at uh, Trustee Grant, second by Trustee Riz, to close to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. We're adjourned.